a lot of people get this one wrong. I think the vocab is just very, very hard here. But if you know words, it's it's not so bad. They kind of just tell you the answer. So let's look at the thing. We got to um, support their conclusion. So focus on their conclusion. Several studies of sediment uh, in streams have shown an inverse correlation between sediment grain size and downstream distance from the primary sediment source, suggesting that stream length has a sorting effect on sediment. Notice I'm not highlighting anything. I don't know what matters yet. That just seems like a lot of science. In a study of sediment sampled at more than a dozen sites in alpine streams, however, however, geologists Camille Liddy and Fritz Schlunniger found that cross-site variations in grain size were not associated with differences in downstream distance. Okay, something's not linked. Uh, though they did not conclude that downstream distance is irrelevant to grain size. Did not conclude it's irrelevant. Rather, they concluded, oh, thank God, they concluded that sediment influx in these streams may have been sufficiently spatially diffuse to prevent the typical sorting effect from being observed. So, okay, the conclusion. Influx of sediment uh, is spatially diffuse and that prevents sorting. Okay, a lot of tough words in there, I told you. So uh, I don't have a dumb summary here, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, this would be a case where I'd be like, all right, I kind of understood some of this. Uh, I don't feel confident to just say it's definitely about this. I'm gonna let the choices help me here. Um, that happens sometimes, especially with these hard science ones, you just gotta wing it and hope the choices are more understandable. So A, the streams regularly experience portions of their banks collapsing into the water at multiple points upstream of the sampling sites. Okay, so if their banks are collapsing, is that an influx of sediment? Influx means something is entering it. So maybe that's an influx of sediment and multiple points upstream. Maybe that's spatially diffuse. Spatially diffuse means in spatially is in space, like where things are located and diffuse means spread out. So maybe, I honestly wouldn't know, but that seems to have some weird connections to some of these words in the passage. So, uh, you know, that's kind of our game here is like, let's connect these things. Now notice what I'm not trying to connect. I'm not trying to connect words like sediment or sorting or grain size. Uh, downstream distance. There's a lot of weird technical jargon, words that are only associated with this kind of science in this passage. Those words don't interest me. If they appear, great, but I'm much more interested in these kind of adjectives and verbs, right? Sediment influx. Influx is a nice, technically I think that that's a noun, but you get my point. It's descriptive. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm focused on. And I know they're not going to use those words again, but they will use other things that kind of hit that same idea. So it's it's about the idea repeating, not the words themselves. So I don't know. A, a, a has some matches. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, B, the streams contain several types of sediment that are not typically found in streams where the sorting effect has been demonstrated. My problem with this is I just don't see any matches, right? Different types of sediment. Did we really talk about in their conclusion different types of sediment? There's sediment influx, but it's not talking about different types. Um, it's spatially diffuse is, is just in space, right? It's not about the different, it's not like a diffusion of different types of sediment. Um, and I guess they're being sorted, but it never talks about like which different types. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, this seems irrelevant. Whereas this has like two matches that I like. C, the streams mostly originate from the same source, but their lengths vary considerably due to the different courses they take. Okay, so are we really talking about different streams though? Mostly originate from the same source, their lengths vary. I don't get the, the sense in this conclusion that we're comparing the streams. We're comparing maybe the sorting effect. We're trying to measure the sorting effect. I, I, this, what does the length have to do with it? I don't know. Maybe that's the spatially diffuse thing. So maybe I put a check mark for that. Again, I don't, I don't really understand this. D, the streams are fed by multiple tributaries that carry significant volumes of sediment and that enter the streams downstream of the sampling sites. Okay. Well, that one I kind of understand. Um, if they, if the tributaries are entering downstream of the sampling site, then we're taking the stuff out of the stream before the sediment enters it. So we're not measuring anything at all, or at least not anything useful, that this is just saying that we're, we're, the data isn't even relevant, right? This is saying that we're, we're taking out, we're measuring things at these sampling sites, but 
there's more stuff happening later in the stream. I guess you have to understand what downstream and upstream means, but uh, th this just to me is obviously wrong. I, it's, it's completely undermining the experiment. That's not what we're trying to do. So at this point, yeah, I'd probably mark it for review because I barely understand it, but I, A would be my, my pick. And, you know, remember, if this is in the hard module, sometimes you've got to be okay with, you know, in this case, I'd be like 70% sure. And I'm placing a bet that that's probably what it is. I've got some matches. I understand what spatially diffuse and sediment influx mean. And I'm making those connections. And I'm like, yeah, that feels like the right connection. I can't make that with any other choice. So uh, it feels right. I don't quite understand what's happening in this passage. But I don't want to spend more time on it because I'm probably right. And if I'm wrong, well, is more time spent on this question really going to increase my odds of getting it right? It's probably just going to take away and uh, from time from other questions and increase my odds of getting other questions wrong. So you got to always think about that. There's there's a there's a level of certainty where you have to just move on. And if we understand the traps and the strategies and enough vocab words, we can get to like 70, 80 percent sure on some very hard questions place a bet, we might be wrong, but more often we're going to be right and it's going to lead to more points. And then if we have more time, we can come back. So I, I don't really know what else to say. Like I, I, I kind of get what's happening. Um, uh, with more time, I get what's happening. So uh, they're, yeah, the, they're trying to explain, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, just focus on their conclusion um, that the sediment influx is may be sufficiently spatially diffused to prevent sorting, right? So they thought... Um, originally, and streams have shown an inverse correlation between sediment grain size and downstream distance, meaning um, as the distance increases, we would have a decrease in grain size. I think that that's what that means. Inverse correlation means as one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. So the further you are from the, I don't know, the sediment uh, from the source, right, the, then you're going to have smaller size, I guess. Uh, suggesting the stream length has a sorting effect on sediment. So yeah, the further the distance, the smaller the size, so it's going to sort by size. Um, in a study of sediment sampled at more than a dozen sites, the, however, um, they found that cross-site variations in grants were not associated with differences in downstream distance. So basically they're saying that this pattern is wrong, is what these people are finding, um, that there isn't a sorting. Um, they did not conclude that downstream distance is irrelevant to grain size, um, they concluded that sediment influx in these streams may have sufficiently spatially diffused to prevent the sorting, meaning, okay, there's not one place where all the dirt, the sediment, is going into the stream. There's multiple places. So, and this is so, you would never do this on the test, but here's the stream, right? And so if all the dirt is coming in here, you're going to have big grains here, we're going to have uh, littler grains here and the little tiniest grains here, right? The further the distance from that, the smaller the size, right? That's what it's, that's, that's the original conclusion, right? You go down the stream and you get the smaller stuff. That's, that's the original conclusion. But if dirt is coming in in multiple places, right? If dirt is coming in here too, then you'd have more, you'd have big ones here as well. And then the medium ones would be here and the littler ones would be down here. Right, so same thing here. If you had a dirt coming in here as well, then this spot would have big ones. So now we can tell the dirt apart because I drew it in different colors, but it would all look like dirt to these people. So if the dirt is coming in, if the sediment is influxing into the stream in different locations, then you would get big grains all over the place because those grains would be sorted for that particular influx of the dirt, but then over the long distance of the stream, because it's coming in multiple places, you're going to get small, big, and medium uh, grains in all sorts of places. It's not going to look sorted because of it's, it's coming in in lots of locations. Like, that's a lot of thought for one question. Like I said, I would never do that on the test. But in case you're curious, that is what they're saying. And so, A, the streams regularly experience portions of their banks collapsing into the water at multiple points upstream. So if they're sampling down here, right, this is where I'm sampling then I'm going to get a wide variety of things because of the dirt coming in in lots of different places. So this, that is what Choice A is saying. It is definitely the answer. But like I said, I would not have been 100% sure like I am right now of that answer on the test. So just be comfortable with less than 100% and you got to move on. And that's how you get to more questions is just doing the best you can and matching ideas and hoping for the best.